are recording right now. Um, welcome everybody. So my name is Sylvia Di Blasio and I represent the World That Reconnects Network. Thank you for joining us. And thank you for joining the Webinars and Conversation Cafe series, where we are offering a wide range of rich educational and supportive opportunities for our global community of World That Reconnects facilitators, members, and friends of the network. Our intention is to strengthen the web of the World of Reconnects community while continually reaching beyond our current edges to weave deeper connections with others who are contributing to the great turning and in diverse and complementary ways. Thank you all. And now I pass the button to Jacqueline and Margot who are going to start with the webinar of Active of today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sylvia. Welcome, everybody. Great to see so many faces uh, here. So what I invite you to do to start with is to have a look at who is here. To go to gallery view, if you're not there already, not speaker view, but gallery view. And just for a moment, look, like not look at the screen, but look at the people somewhere on the other side of that screen. You can even go to the next pages on most of the devices. You can look at a next page. See all these people wherever, somewhere on the planet, each in their homes or offices. Just look at people there. Mm -hmm. So just a warm welcome and some people don't have their, um, um, you can't see their, their picture so let's trust they're, they're doing whatever they're doing. So a warm welcome. So as we welcomed each other, let's also take a moment to center ourselves. If you want, you can just relax, maybe close your eyes for a moment if you wish. Feel, let's feel our body, feel your body. Notice how you sit on your seat. Noticing thoughts, feelings, no need to do anything with them. Notice your breathing. Let's move into our inner space, our own source, source place, our place through which we connect with the whole, inner place of hope. That place, let's be with a sense of our caring for the world. Let's consciously connect with the, the lineage of the work that reconnects and active hope, the energetic field of many people involved in this work. So connecting with each other over the various countries and be fully present for our session, exploring active hope, emerging into a new world. May this session benefit ourselves and our planet. Thank you. So, thank you again for being here. Brief introduction. Um, my name is Margot. Um, I am originally Dutch and I live in the Findhorn community in Scotland. I've been here 29 years. I work for the Findhorn Foundation, very much involved in education and workshops. Um, about 20 years ago, Joanna Macy, uh, founder of the work that we connect, visited our community 
and I joined in with uh, three of her uh, seminars. And the first time she came, I was actually invited to be part of her support team. So that was a great opportunity to get to know her a bit better, find out how she works, how she facilitates. So after that, um, at some point I joined a practice group, a local group here who wanted to practice the work that reconnects. So I get, got some confidence in actually, you know, working with Active Hope and the work that reconnects. And at some point I decided my, usually after an event you need to make a commitment. And at some point my commitment was to bring more Active Hope here in this community here in Scotland and into the world. So I invited Chris Johnston to do a workshop with me. Now, Chris Johnston is the co-writer of the book Active Hope. He wrote together with uh, Joanna Macy. And he is actually living down the road here, just five miles away from here. So we did a few workshops together and now I'm teaming up with somebody else called Jacqueline who I invite to introduce yourself. Hi, Jacqueline. Ooh, thanks, Margo. Yeah, my name is Jacqueline and um, I'm living in the UK, but I first came across Joanna Mace's work when I was living in Australia and I was working with an, um, actually an American organization called the Pachamama Alliance. And they were using a lot of Joanna's work and I found it really powerful and um, was yeah, fortunate to be trained as a facilitator of the work. And then, Many years later, I found myself in Fintorn, um, actually worked with Joanna there when she came to visit at one time, and then later with Chris and with Margot. And um, I just find this work so inspiring, and I just always enjoy any opportunity to share it with other people. Um, some of you, I imagine, may have tried it already. Some of you may be trying it for the first time, but it's really exciting for me just to see so many people on here and get a chance to share it all with you in a different way, online, which is a new way for me to do it and maybe it's a new way for, for you guys to also um, experience it as well so welcome thank you Jacqueline so a um, brief overview over this session so this is a very experiential session I know it's called a webinar wait I'll put myself into another view so it's called a webinar but for me, I actually really like to do experiential sessions. So to actually do the work rather than talk about it. That's just how I, how I am. So what we're gonna do is we have a, like a bit of an introduction of about Active Hope and Joanna Macy. And then we're actually going into some experiential activities, a little bit of inner work, a little bit work in pairs, in breakout rooms, and a little bit of sharing um, in the large group to the best of our abilities with, you know, a good sized group, about 110 people now, so which is fantastic. So it's an experiential session. So I want to welcome everyone to, to join in. I know we're, you know, most of us don't know each other, but this is a fantastic opportunity to get to know a few people uh, a little bit better and creating a, a space together where we can do that. Also for you to know at the middle, so this is from four till six, around five o'clock, we'll have a short two, three minute bio break. So you can look after your personal needs. Um, so that's, that's the plan. So I would like to say now um, a little bit about Joanna Macy and the work that reconnects. So Active Hope is, uh, is a practice based on the work that reconnects, which was uh, initiated by Joanna Macy. So Joanna Macy is an author and teacher. Uh, she is a schooler of systems thinking, of deep ecology and of Buddhism. She's a very respected voice in the, uh, in the movements of peace and justice. She's also bringing her learnings from uh, 60 years of social activism. So uh, Joanna wrote several books and one of them is the book Active Hope. So that I actually have here, well used. 
She wrote it together with Chris Johnston. So the work that reconnects, some of you may be very familiar already with it, and for some of you it may be new. So the work that reconnects is, an, is designed to build resilience. It can be seen as inner work for activists, inner work for people who care about the planet. So it is a framework where we can explore our inner responses, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions, and to, to look at different ways to, to respond to the situation in our world. So the intention is to strengthen and develop our heart mind in a way, just like when you, you know, when you do physical actions, you, you do bodybuilding or running or any, any sport, you strengthen your physical muscles and your physical well-being. And I see the, the active hope and the work that reconnects as a way to strengthen our inner, inner system, not just our muscles, but our inner responses. So, and so that when we have to deal with the world, which all of us are doing or have to do uh, at some, in, in our, each in our own way, we can do that in the best possible way. So I'm sure it won't be new for you to, when I state that, you know, many of us live in very challenging times. You know, we are currently all experiencing the COVID-19 pandemic with a huge amount of challenges. There is a climate crisis, you know, huge amount of challenges, financial crisis, all these various, you know, various challenges, you know, just open the newspaper, reading the news, you know, you, you, we are bombarded with a huge amount of news. Much of it is very challenging. How much news is actually cheerful and uplifting? So then the question is, what do we do with with all that information, with all that really challenging information. So the, the, the subtitle of the book is How to Face the Mess We're In Without Going Crazy. And I think that's just a very catchy subtitle. How can we deal with the huge amount of challenges and find a way to respond, you know, hopefully from a positive way, you know, from our hearts, from an open heart and uh, in a way that is constructive. So that's a little bit, a very little bit, just a nutshell about the work that reconnects and active hope. And in this session, we hope to give you a small taster of that. And later on, we'll actually have a month long session that we do in September. We'll tell you more about it. So this is just a short taster of, uh, of that work. And Jacqueline, I want to invite you to say a bit more about Active Hope, what it is. Mm, yeah, thanks, Margot. Um, yeah, and just on the topic of that workshop, we will tell you a bit more about that at the end of this webinar. Um, and we also want to extend a, a special offer to everybody who's actually on this webinar, a special, special price offer. If you're interested in this work, if you find that this is inspiring for you and you really want to dive in and apply this in your life in much more practical ways you'll get a chance to to find out more about that at the end of this webinar and as we said we want to extend a special price to anyone who's interested in doing that um, so a bit more about what active hope is so um, anytime we face a situation in life you know we have a choice about how we respond but sometimes when we're facing overwhelming challenges and let's face it as Margaret said there's a lot of stuff going on in the world right now you know, we can really feel like our actions don't count for much. Um, and so the way that we actually respond and the degree to which we believe our actions can make a difference is really shaped by how we feel about hope. So there are really two types of hope in the world. There's passive hope and there's active hope. So passive hope is where we, you know, we hope that things are going to turn out for the best and that something outside of ourselves will happen that will change things towards the, the way we'd like them to be. Passive hope. And then there's active hope. So active hope is where we become active participants in bringing about the kind of future that we really, really hope for, the one we want to see. Active hope itself is actually a practice. So it's, it's something that we do rather than something that we have. 
And the first thing we do is we take a really clear assessment of reality, like what's really happening right now. Then we identify what we hope for. And then in the third step, we take actions to move ourselves and our situation closer towards the goal that we'd like to see. So how do we do that? Well, Margot mentioned um, the work that reconnects. And the work that reconnects is structured around um, a spiral, a particular spiral, again, created by Joanna Macy, designed by her. And I want to just share now um, a screen with you so you can see how this spiral looks. And then we'll be walking through this spiral together today. As I said, we're kind of dipping our toe in it today. And in the workshop, we'll be really diving into each of these areas much more deeply. So um, this is the spiral. Some, um, this lady, Dory Midnight, drew this in the form of a beautiful dandelion, which feels very um, apt for what we're looking at now. So we start here where our roots are with gratitude. The first thing we do is we look at, you know, what are we grateful for? We take stock of the things in our life that we can be grateful for, the things that we love. Uh, we're counting our blessings, basically. Then we move on to the next stage, which is honoring our pain for the world. So now, once we've got a foundation of gratitude and being really present to the blessings in our life, then we can move forward and look into, look at, you know, how do we feel about what's happening in the world and be really truthful with ourselves about that. We can explore the things that we're concerned about, what we're angry about, afraid of, um, what makes us sad, desperate, numb. The third phase, once we've really taken a stock of how things are, is we can then start to look at things differently. Like, you know, how, how might we look at the world? Um, can we reframe how we see ourselves in the world? Have we got particular stories about ourselves and about our environment that we're a bit stuck in? And maybe they're not actually true. So what else might be true? And then the fourth stage is going forth. So once we can begin to see things from a different perspective, all of a sudden a whole load of new actions can become clear for us that we hadn't seen before. And then we can start to take, you know, maybe just one step. Today you might have just one step that you'd like to take to move yourself towards the kind of future that you'd like to live in. Um, so yeah, so those are, this is the spiral of the work that reconnects. We're going to be looking at these four areas today. And as Margot said, uh, we do encourage you to be, this is a participatory event if you choose, choose to do that. Um, we will be putting you into small breakout groups, uh, probably three people into a group. And if you feel like you, you know, you don't really want to share within that group, that's fine. You know, just let your other participants know you'd, you'd rather just be with whatever's happening. There's no obligation to share, but the opportunity is there for you to, to be actively engaged. Great. Thank um, you. Yeah, mm -hmm. Thank you, Jacqueline. So next we're actually going to uh, move into the, the participatory part, the, the active part of the spiral. Um, and the, the quality, going to explore the quality of gratitude. Just in order to do that, I would like to make a suggestion. So we're, you know, the proper, a, lar a large group, 108, beautiful number of people at the moment. Most of us don't know each other. I would like to make a group agreement to halt an intention of respect. So especially when we go into small groups to treat each other with respect. So we're gonna have a possibility to like take turns. So everybody has a couple of minutes to share. So when you, you share, you, the idea is that you have the space to simply share and not go into a dialogue or discussion. So to have just space that one person shares and the other two usually listen, and then we take turns. So the idea also is that when you listen and you hear stories from others, to listen with a sense of respect. And also I would like to suggest the quality of confidentiality. So the idea is after this session, you feel free to share about your own experiences with anyone you like. But if you hear the stories or sharings from others, to actually leave that, you know, to leave that and let them share about it. So to leave that and hold a sense of respect for that. So I want to create a safe and supportive space that everybody feels they can really share. It can be very 
personal to share your, your joys or your pains with, you know, mostly with a complete stranger. But there are ways to do that if we all hold that quality of respect. So this is an invitation. Um, so also here in the community, we often say, listen with your, your ears, your eyes and your heart. So that's a way to, um, to do that. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to explore the theme of gratitude. So that is the first step of the spiral that Jacqueline explained. So gratitude is a way to actually build resilience. It's a way to not to ignore the, the challenges in our lives and in the world, not at all. But it is an opportunity to look through the eyes of gratitude, to look in a way with the idea of the glass is half full instead of half empty. So this is not the only truth, but this is like, you know, a 20 minute or so possibility to, to look at, at our life and the world and ourselves with that eyes of gratitude. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to randomly move into groups of three, into breakout rooms. So Sylvia is the expert on this. And in a couple of minutes, we'll put everyone in a, in a small group. So in that small group, first you can introduce yourself, say your name and where, what part of the planet you, you are at the moment. And then I'm going to give you two questions, two open sentences. So the idea is you divide the time. So there will be nine minutes in total. You divide the time. So it probably would be three minutes each if all of you share. Where you answer these questions. So the, the questions or the open sentences, they are what I love about being alive on earth is. So if you want to have pen and paper, you might want to write it down. What I love about being alive on earth is, and then when you're the speaker, you just complete that sentence. Now the second sentence is, what I appreciate about myself is, and again, you complete that sentence. And you can alternate those or have a, a minute on one and a minute on the other. So you'll just have a couple of minutes to do that. So and the person, the, the person who is going first is the person who lives closest to the North Pole. So you figure out in your little group who is going first, who is second, and who is third. So that's very simple. Um, I think that's it. Anything else I need to add here? So you have also Sylvia will send you the sentences in, in your breakout room. So help each other. Also help each other with the timing. So you manage the time between you and there will be uh, a sentence when it's time to stop. You'll have a minute or so to complete. And that will appear in your breakout room. So, so there was a question here about what you said about the North. So Margot suggested that the first person who speaks when you're in your groups is the person who lives closest to the North Pole, the northerly most part of the planet. Just a simple and, way to decide who is first. Yeah. And the questions um, that Margot just asked have been put in the chat room as well. The statements. Great, thank you. Okay, is that it? Sylvia, then over to you to divide people in groups of three. Yeah, so the groups are divided, but some people are leaving. So um, you may end up in groups of two. Um, so, Sorry for that, but you know, it's really difficult to rearrange groups once they have been done. So um, I'm going to open the groups right now and the questions are in the chat. So I, I ask everybody not to continue posting questions so uh, there's no confusion. So questions are now in the chat and I'm going to start opening the rooms. Just as said, uh, you, you will see an announcement in your screen. So please accept that. Thank you.
And Jacqueline and oh, Jacqueline, you can go to the room. I put you into a room. So Maria, Kesley, Veronica, Lorraine, and Cass, if you can accept going into the rooms, you don't have to participate if you don't feel what, uh, you know you want to. Um, but you can just accept. You will see something in your screen and accept um, to go into the rooms, and and it's all yours, Margot and Jacqueline. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Thank you everyone for engaging with this and also again apologies for any technical hiccups or especially if you're on your own in, in a room. Sorry about that. I hope next time it will be different. So um, that's one of some of our limitations. So we want to ask you to actually just take a moment to see what stood out for you from this exercise from this looking at gratitude and maybe write one word in the chat room of what stood out for you. So just take a moment to, to do that. That is one way to harvest a little bit so we can get a sense of what you were going through. Connection, heart opening, beauty, appreciation of diversity, nature, love, Meeting across distance, family, hope is alive, connection, acceptance, difficulty of self-acceptance, appreciation of little things, open and loving, depth, sadness, connected, simple connection, respect and warmth. Wow, there are too many to actually listening, to actually read out. Compassion with all creatures. Wow, beautiful. Potential for change. Caring. Yes, let's just mm. take, a, take it in when we hear all that, when I hear all that. You know, just take in all that, all the, the result of looking at, at gratitude for, let's say, 10 minutes and what that, what that does. So I will now pass it on to Jacqueline and looking at the next part of the spiral. Jacqueline, over to you. Mm. Thank you, Margot. So the next stage of the spiral, we're going to now look at honoring our pain for the world. So the reason that we do this is, um, you know, when we do it in a bigger workshop, we create a, a very safe and supportive space that allows us to look at you know, how we really feel about the current state of the world and to be really honest with ourselves and with one another about, about that. Not to push our feelings away, but to just um, allow them to be. Not needing to change them, fix them, just acknowledging how they are. And, and the reason we do this is because it's a bit like a road map. You know, if we want to ever get from one place to another and we're looking at a map, you know, we know where we want to go, but before we even start, planning our journey, we need to know where we are. So to begin with knowing where we are gives us more power then to move forward effectively. So to start this exploration, um, I'd like to offer you some of the different ways in which we might respond to the current situation that we see in the world. So as some people mentioned in the chat room, you know, we, we mentioned climate change, we mentioned um, COVID, of course, there's a huge uh, Black Lives Matter movement at the moment, you know, stamping out um, racism, looking at white supremacy, looking at a lot of unconscious behaviour there as well. There's gender issues, you know, there, there's so, so, so much. So I just want to acknowledge that if, if we haven't even listed them, it's just because you know, we could be here for quite some time naming everything. So whatever lens you're looking at it from, we really invite you to engage with this topic from that lens. Um, and some of these slides, some of these questions will apply uh, for all of you. So yeah, in honouring our pain for the world, these are some of the things that we might say to ourselves about what's happening in the world right now, and some of the statements we might hear um, outside of ourselves. So the first one, Phil, um, are you with us? Yeah. 
I am, but it's, it's not working for the sliding. Um, okay. Would you like me to do it from here? I might be able to do it from my screen. Um, yeah, that would be great because, oh, there, there, sorry. Oh, right there. Okay. There we are all of a sudden. Yeah, there we go. So this is, this is one, you know, I don't believe it's that dangerous. I don't believe things are that bad. It's the first one we might hear around us. Um, another statement is, it's not my role to sort this out. Other people in other positions, positions of more power or influence can sort this out. Um, I don't want to stand out from the crowd. That might feel familiar for some. As we have in the UK this idea of the tall poppy syndrome, not wanting to stand up because we'll just get our heads cut off. Um, this information threatens my financial or political interests. Uh, it's so upsetting that I prefer not to think about it. That's yeah, very completely understandable and certainly one I recognize in myself um, at times. Um, I feel paralyzed. I'm aware of the danger, but I don't know what to do. And then the last one, um, there's no point in doing anything. It won't make any difference anyway. What difference am I going to make? I'm just one person, so you know, it's too too big a problem for for one person to make any kind of real difference. So those are some of the some of the thoughts, some of the ideas that might be you know you might be aware of, you might read or hear around you. So once again, we're going to put you into breakout rooms. I believe that Sylvia's rearranged the room. So if you were by yourself or in a pair. Ideally, hopefully you'll be in a triad, a threesome this time. Um, and again, if you don't feel like you want to discuss your own feelings around this, that's fine. You might just want to make notes for yourself in your own book. Just let the other people in your room know that. But some of the questions that we invite you to consider this time. How I feel about the current condition of the world is. How I feel about the current condition of the world is. And then the second one, what I do with these feelings is. What I do with these feelings is. This time we invite you um, that the person with the shortest hair starts first. And again, Sylvia will give you a notification when there are two minutes left of your time together. And you have eight minutes in total. So Sylvia, I think we're going to create the breakout rooms now. Yeah, they are created. So I hope this time it works because um, I think the people who stay are more committed. So thank right. you for that. So I'm going to open the rooms right now. Okay, thanks. And including Margot and Jacqueline, you can stay or you can go to your room. It doesn't matter okay. depending you. what you need. Okay. Welcome back. Okay, so we have everybody back right now. Okay. So Jacqueline, you want to continue with this? Mm, yeah, so, so again, you know, if you'd like to share in the chat window anything you notice from your time in your small groups around how you're feeling about the state of the world right now. Is there something you'd like to share? Terror, heaviness, yeah. Overwhelm, sadness. The work's in progress. <laughs> yeah. Despair and yet optimism. And worry. Meditation helps handle the feelings, yeah. Despair to quiet hope, discouragement, heartbreak. Eight minutes is too short, maybe eight months will be better <laughs> to explore it, it's true. Courage to feel the pain and try it anyway. Overwhelming grief. Acknowledging pain in ourselves opens something else up in ourselves. Complex feelings, hopeless, sitting with uncertainty. Shielding equals nourishing equals action. 
Mm. Fear that motivates. Oh, the need to dance. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot that we're holding together individually and collectively about what's happening right now. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so our plan now was to just give everyone an opportunity for a quick um, bio break, if you should need that. We've been here for an hour, so if you just need to go off, stretch your legs, have a very quick visit to the bathroom, please do that. And uh, Margot, are we starting again in a couple of minutes? Is that the idea? Yeah, let's have like th three, three minutes, is that okay? Three minutes, okay, so one minute past the hour. Wherever you are, one minute past the hour. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm, gonna, I'm starting now. Thanks, Sylvia. Okay. Thank you, Sylvia, and welcome back, everybody. So, we're moving through the spiral. So, we started with gratitude, looking at the world, at ourselves through gratitude. And now we've just done honoring our pain. So, these are almost like the two sides, the two different sides. The gratitude is usually the more uplifting pleasant uh, feeling and honoring our pain is definitely somebody mentioned it's quite heavy it's like yes that can be painful heavy sad frustrating all these things the idea is to to give in a way equal airtime to to all of these aspects of ourselves because that's that is reality so what we're gonna do now is the third um, part of the spiral is seeing with new eyes. So this is actually the part where transformation takes place, where we're gonna look um, at our lives, ourselves, at each other, looking at it in a different way. Now, this is because we talked about building resilience earlier. And this is in a way an opportunity to, to do that. Now, most, um, most spiritual practices, in case you have a, a spiritual practice, work with this idea of building resilience. I'm involved with Buddhism. So that is one way actually to, to look at the world, to change our mind, our hearts, to change our perspective. I'm living here in this Finthorn community where, in a way, the key words, this is like a spiritual community, and the key words of what we're doing is the transformation of consciousness. So I see this third part of the spiral, seeing with new eyes, as a place to actually look at life in a different way. You know, is that possible? And if yes, how do we do it? Now, some of you may be familiar already with methods to, to do that. That's great. Here we're going, to, going again in a small uh, experiential activity to actually look at our, ourselves and our lives in a different way, seeing with new eyes. So I would like to guide us into a, a short guided meditation, guided, um, a guided session where I'll, I'll ask you to just sit back and maybe close your eyes if, you're, if you like, or look at something neutral or out of the window. But sometimes closing your eyes can be uh, the easiest way to do it. And I'll guide us through, um, through a few steps. But before I go there, I would like to do a little bit of a breathing exercise, a little bit of breathing to bridge where we just have been, the honoring of our pain, breathe through our experiences, and then move into this guided imagery of um, seeing with new eyes. So guided imagery, I just invite you to, um, to, to think of something, of, think actually of something where you made a difference and did something positive. So I'll just guide us through it and ask you a few questions. So you simply follow the questions and see what comes up. 
sometimes people have memories or see see things visually or hear hear sounds so i just invite you to relax and follow them okay so i invite you to again take a moment to connect with your body and feel your feet on the floor your sit bones on the seat shoulders relaxed if you want to close your eyes that may help just notice your breathing So you may still have a lingering memory of our previous exercise, the honoring of the pain. Lingering feelings, memories of that, that session. I invite you to simply breathe with that. Breathing in and breathing out. Allowing ourselves to open up to the experiencing, the experiences. If there is pain, allow it to soften your heart when you breathe in and breathe out. We don't need to push anything away. And we don't need to hold on to anything. Breathing is part of life. And also we can allow the memory of our previous part of the session to move to the background while we breathe. Move into a neutral space. Now I invite you to Remember a recent time in your life where something good and important happened because of what you did or said. Remember a recent situation where you did or said something that had a positive effect on your surroundings or on you. There may be more situations, but choose one specific situation that stood out, stands out for you. Recapture the scene and play it back for yourself. Where were you? What happened? Recall as many details of that situation? What were the responses of your surroundings, maybe other people, if they were involved? Or animals? How did it make you feel? Can you identify the feeling it brought you? So 
While you continue breathing, I invite you to let this feeling fill you now. You can let it fill your heart, your mind, your body, your whole being. Imagine your whole being is filled with that positive feeling. Now imagine you begin radiating out that quality to your surroundings. Just in your room, wherever you are. Let it fill the room you're in. without any effort. Now I invite you to allow yourself to make a gesture or a posture that symbolizes this feeling. Without thinking or judging, just allow your hands to make a movement or place it somewhere, a shape, a posture, a movement. No judgment, just be spontaneous. Allow what comes. And if nothing comes, that's fine. Make a mental image of you and this movement, this posture. Make it smaller, relaxing into a neutral space. But stay connected with that feeling and bring that feeling back with you when you open your eyes and return back to the group. So again, we're having an opportunity to share with some people in a breakout room. So simply take a few minutes, there will be six minutes in total, again in groups of three, so it would be two minutes each. Share your experience, share your, your quality and like briefly share your uh, positive experience. So Sylvia, over to you to create breakout rooms of three people. Okay, they're all opening now. You can join again. We're recording again. Welcome back. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, as is now our tradition, um, I would love to hear a little bit what did you notice in the breakout room? either from your own story or from your, your partner, partners, what was the quality that you noticed? And again, write them in the chat function. Let's see if I can read some of them out. Resolution, calm empowerment, getting energy from youth, small things change, um, family, a service, Enthusiasm, relief, kindness, courage to try, wow, compassion, generosity, gratitude, presence, embodiment, thankfulness, honoring the good we have emanated, 
uh, too short but beautiful okay simple things dance hugs sharing activism with daughter wow receptivity somatic focus reconnection connection with our bodily experience wow amazing to hear so much to hear from um yeah so many different i noticed that there are so many different uh, aspects of that so it's very very beautiful and actually enriching to hear that so thank you everyone for engaging with this and yeah bringing that presence uh, we actually did it in the breakout room and you know, Jacqueline and me sharing our stories of, you know, smaller things or bigger things. And I just notice what a difference it makes. And the idea is also, so we did this in just like 10 minutes. So it is actually possible to do things th this in our lives. So this is a practice we do now, you know, together and we share it. It is also something, you know, a, a possible practice that you can do anytime, you know, in the evening, on a, on a daily basis, to do something, especially when the going is tough, to actually do something like this and see what the difference it makes. How can this help us in our lives sometimes when we are, you know, in a challenging situation, being bombarded by difficulties and challenges. Something like this is, you know, cheap and easy and doable to actually just take a moment to, to change our perspective and then look at our issues, whatever we're dealing with in our lives. Does that make a difference? So this was uh, seeing with new eyes and an opportunity to, you know, to, to do that. So I now would like to pass it on again to Jacqueline for our final section. Jacqueline, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Margot. Um, I was just wanting to try and find a spiral so we can just remind ourselves of where we are and the journey we've taken so far. So let me just show you this once more. So here we are. So we started at the roots with gratitude, a great place for our roots to take seed and grow. We looked at our pain for the world, how we're feeling about what's happening in the world right now. As some people said it was eight minutes wasn't enough. We could have taken eight months. Um, and then we looked at seeing with new eyes and uh, how, how we can suddenly change, as Margot said. It doesn't take very long to stop and reflect on moments in our lives when we have made a big difference to reconnect with that possibility in ourselves. So now we're looking at going forward. What's next? Um, so the first thing I invite you to do really is just to take a moment to take stock on, you know, what, what have we covered today? What, what have you noticed already moving in you? Um, you might want to reflect on some of the things that you notice that you're grateful for. When you think about that, what jumps out, what stands out, what nourishes and supports you. We acknowledged and honoured our pain for the current situation. How do you feel about what's happening right now? And then finally we connected to what it feels like when we make a positive change in our lives and in the lives of others. So when you reflect back on those three areas, and what from that place, what's, what's next? Especially from looking from the last exercise, when you connect in with that movement, with that feeling, maybe with the words you shared in the chat room, what's calling you? What's flirting with you? Is there a next step that you can take towards creating the whole healthy and healed world that you'd like to see. It's a beautiful phrase from Charles Eisenstein, if you've come across Charles Eisenstein, the most beautiful world, the more beautiful world that our heart knows is possible. What's a step that you could take towards that, towards creating the more beautiful world that our hearts know is possible? 
And the thing with it, it doesn't matter if it's a big step, it doesn't matter if it's a small step. The most important thing is that it's yours. It's what calls you. Any action you can take, your expression, is going to add to those that others take and it will make a difference. I'll give you a little bit of time just to reflect on this and make some notes in your book. Some people are starting to share some things in the chat room already. Trying to do something good for someone or the world every day. Daily centering with love for those around us, sharing writing and experience. Being kind to someone you don't like. Yeah, that's a powerful one. So once more, we'd like to put you back into your triads. We're going to give you six minutes to share and you might start by saying one step I'm inspired to take or I intend to. Very simple. One step I'm inspired to take or I intend to. And Sylvia if you're ready to put you back into breakout rooms please. Yeah. And I posted the questions in the chat, so I'm opening the breakup rooms. Perfect, thank you. You're welcome. So breakup rooms are open right now. We are recording again. We have everybody back in the room. Okay, welcome back. So Jacqueline, is that you? Yep, I'm still here and um, so yeah, it'd be really great. I know some people already started to share some of their commitments before we even went to the break. But if there's something you'd like to share with the bigger group about what you can see, a next step or something you're committed to, something you intend to, and then please do that. Live boldly, says Steve. And there's lots of appreciation here for the subgroups. Um, it seems like a lot of people appreciated being in the smaller groups, getting that chance to share, get to know one another. The power of that. Staying open physically and emotionally to the good. Staying at the table, so to speak. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. Small, local, specific. Restart a creative writing group. We're not alone and they're not, there are not only a few of us. That's really, really true. If you want to be inspired, look for a talk by Paul Hawken, um, given at the Bioneers Conference about the enormous, literally millions of organisations working at grassroots level. If you feel like you're alone, find that talk, Paul Hawken. I'll put it in my room at the Bioneers. Calling friends to see how I can support the people without lands movement. Mm. Loving kindness to the unskillful people. Lots of love and heart connection here. Yeah, we're not alone. There is a great turning. Yes, there is. More questions. How to unearth institutionalized oppression and think with others to do so. Yeah. Share a campaign post on Facebook with passion and love. I no longer grieve alone. Mm. Mm -hmm. mm. So thank you everybody for sharing your commitments either in your smaller group or with the larger group. Um, there's a lot of inspiration there. Hopefully you'll get a chance to have a quick glance through the chat room as well and read them for yourselves. For me, what I notice when I read those is the, is, is the common themes of love, connection, care, that we're not alone, that we are part of a much bigger movement. 
there's a lot, a lot of us. And hopefully that gives you inspiration and hope. So Margot. Yeah, thank you. you. Thank you. So what we wanted to do next is for uh, about 10 minutes, basically to open the space. If there are any comments you would like to make or any questions to ask, um, we'll do our best to answer. It's not guaranteed. But if you want to say something or ask something, then please raise your hand electronically. So the way to do that is you go to the participants at the bottom of your screen, if you're on a laptop, and um, find the option at the bottom of that participant section is an option to raise your hand. So then, uh, I see already one person is doing that. So then raise your hand electronically, and then we can take um, questions or comments from there. So I see Christine from Brazil. Christine, would you like to unmute yourself or maybe Sylvia can unmute you? No, I'm, I'm, I'm unmuted already. Okay. So I, I just would like to say that I'm very happy to have participated because I feel really empowered, you know, and I'm always really, really impressed that very simple, so simple things are so powerful and this is this is wonderful. I'm very happy to know this movement and I'm going to follow this, this, this power. So I'm really, I, I, I'm really grateful. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. That's great to hear. Good luck on your next step in your journey. Um, there is Elsa in Montreal, Canada. Hi Elsa, please unmute Hello. yourself. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can, hi. So, um, first of all, uh, a feedback. Um, I'm really impressed with um, how you can keep every part so brief without having a feeling of being rushed. Like, so there is some kind of art of conciseness that you master that I'm really impressed with. So I'm drawing inspiration from this to really trust the spiral that it doesn't need like lengthy explanations. However, like um, each breakout exercise it is a little bit too short. Um, so I'm really looking forward to maybe perhaps doing the longer thing that you're doing. Um, uh, the first one in September, I cannot that schedule and I saw something about a possible October group with a different schedule that I could possibly make so I, I'm sure you are going to talk about it but I want to voice the my in from finding it for finding out about the second October thing that takes place in a, in a schedule that for me in, in North America falls during the day on Wednesdays mm. Thank you. Yes, we, the Jacqueline and me, we do one in um, a month long course with like three hour sessions starting the 5th of September. That is, but um, there are a lot of other courses happening also by other facilitators. So I suggest you check the word, work that reconnects website because there, you know, on the, there's a section events and there you can find um, other people leading longer sessions and ongoing sessions so that's you know that's a good place to check out what's possible I don't know exactly about the October one that's other people doing it I, I don't know but no, no I thought it was you I thought you were doing two groups no we do the group starting the 5th of September like four Saturday af or afternoons in the UK it's afternoons it must be somebody else so there are a lot of a lot of facilitators, so it must be someone else. Yeah, it's a good idea. We might do it again, but who knows? For now, we do September. Yeah, yeah, but great. You want to continue with it because that is the idea for us that we do longer sessions, like to go deeper. You know, I was supposed to talk about that later, but we go then deeper within it, within the whole material, longer exercises, longer time in breakout rooms. Also, more things for integration. So that's uh, yeah, mm. yeah. And 
the other thing we can do, Elsa, is uh, make a note of your contact details and let you know when we are putting on some other events. The one we're doing in September, I hear the dates don't work for you, but the timings are scheduled to be UK European evenings, so that would be American mornings, early afternoon. Um, yeah, and we'll certainly be looking at other opportunities. So we'll keep in contact with you. I think we've got your email details through the work that we connect, so we'll, we'll keep you posted. Great. Thank you. So, Tracy. Um, hi, thank you so much. Um, I really uh, enjoyed this session. And I just wanted to ask about, um, like, I, I was familiar um, with the uh, work that reconnects, and it was nice to kind of see that uh, spiral and, and work with it again today. And I just wondered about the active hope like um i haven't i haven't read that book of of joanna and, and chris's and uh i guess i was wondering especially with respect to the the longer session that's coming up if you could speak a bit about like i saw lots of similarities today and and uh, sameness between active hope and the work that reconnects and i guess i'm wondering what what are the differences or whether there are additional um, things about active hope that that we might uh, get from the longer session. Yeah. So the I the difference between the work that reconnects the work that reconnects was I think created years ago, like thirty or more years ago. That was originally the title that Joanna Macy gave to to her work, and described it in several books. Then um, Active Hope, this book was written um, later, about, I don't know, five or ten years ago or so. I can't remember exactly, but it was written much later. Um, well, if someone finds it, but that was more recent. And I actually spoke to Chris, the, the, the co-author, and he said we needed, we wanted a new title and we came up with Active Hope. That seemed catching and, you know, he, he, you know, he, he was passionate about that title, Active Hope. He said, that's really what we need right now. We need Active Hope. So I see it as a progression of the work that reconnects. A lot of the exercises in Active Hope, when I go to the website, the work that reconnects website, they're also on there. And sometimes there are a few new exercises or a little bit of a description, like it's just a new layer, more like a progression. So it's not different, but more a progression. That's how I would um, understand it. I don't know if Sophia has more information on that, uh, wants to say something here, but this, this is my understanding of it. Sophia is busy. Mm -hmm. So that this is my understanding. And uh, yeah, and in the month long version, we go deeper, so we use some of the exercises from, from the book or from uh, other the work that reconnects. We go deeper into it. It mm. is a committed group for the whole month. Um, you'll also get to, to hang out with a buddy group. So we create buddy groups. So in between the, the sessions with the large groups, you get to meet with a small group of like three to five people where you then share more about the integration of the work. We also give some integration activity. So at the end of each session, we do a suggestion related to gratitude, honoring our pain, etc. So that during the week, you can deepen and expand your connection with that theme. And then you can share about that with a small group without facilitators. So you'll have much more time. You spend an hour or hour and a half together. Again, that is to, to deepen the experience. Mm -hmm. so, and we're also having a, a, a specific Facebook group only for the participants of the month long session. So again, then people can build more connection, build more intimacy, share their experiences and learn from each other. Because I think that is very rich maybe you found that already in the breakout rooms, we can learn so much from each other. If you sit in a little group with a few other people, you might think, wow, you know, I, you, know you can learn from each other. So mm. that's the idea. Yeah. Let's give you, a, give you a bit of an idea. 
So several people have asked about the schedule, to ask me to share the schedule. So we've just touched on that a bit already. Um, so it's um, the four Saturdays in September and the schedule is uh, UK time 5.30, sorry, 3 p.m. to 6 p.m. So each um, session is three hours long. Um, and then whatever time zone that is for you. Um, I'm also going to put now in the chat room the page where you can go to find more information. And we will also be putting this into an email. So you'll be getting a follow up email straight after this call. Um, it will include a copy of the recording as soon as that's ready. Um, it will include the link to the find out more about the month long course that we're doing. As Margot says, you know, it's really about if you can see that this work could help anything you're doing in your life, then just, you know, dive in, um, use this workshop to, you know, to, to really kind of activate and support you in making the kind of changes you want to make in any area of your life. You can apply it to any area of your life. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, for, it's for complete beginners. If you've never done this work before, that's also going to work for you. If you've done this work before, it's still going to work for you newly because you'll be working with new areas of your life, new things that you're passionate about. Um, and the other thing we also want to offer you for people who are related to the work that reconnects network, which you all are, um, is to give you a, a significantly discounted price if you want to book in. Um, and within the next, if you book in within the next 24 hours, um, the price is normally either 180, 150 or 120. We have like a sliding scale, that's pounds. Um, but if you book within the next 24 hours, you can get it for 95 pounds. So that's almost a half price offer for you. So anybody, you know, if you can see this is really going to make a difference for you, then that opportunity is there as well. We've still got a few places available. Um, and as I said, all of that's also going to be in the email. So um, I think everybody's got, um, I think, uh, uh, Sylvia, have you got everybody's email address who's booked onto this? course already or do we need to harvest I, emails somehow? You've got them already. Okay. Yeah, I do. Um, we don't usually share the emails with the participants because, you know, yeah, too sure. many people to ask for authorization. But what I will share in the email is um, a forum that we have that is completely open and free for everybody. And then yeah. you can join the forum and connect through that. Yeah. Great. How many participants for the immersion? Um, I think we're going to cap it um, around 25, around 25 people. So it'll be a, a much smaller group. Um, you know, Margaret and I still need to discuss it. Might, might be 30, not quite sure. We haven't fully agreed that yet, but around that sort of size. And um, as Margot said, you're also going to be put into buddy groups. So you'll work in between our, our sessions every Saturday, you'll get the opportunity to work together in your buddy group and deepen the inquiry. We'll set you assignments that you can work with through the week as well. So it's really a much, a very rich experience, or at least that's our intention. We have a facilitator of each small group in the immersion. Um, we, what we will probably do in the immersion is we have the ability to, to jump in and join you in the groups while you're in the group. So that's probably something that we will include when we're holding the emergent session. Yeah. Any more questions here? Uh, there is still uh, Steve from California had a yeah. question or a comment. Steve? Hi. Uh, well, first, uh, a huge thanks oh, to yeah. for your amazing generosity of spirit. Uh, you've not only shared what you know and how you do it, but have encouraged us to look more broadly. And it's extremely generous and inspiring. And your particular articulation of the distinctions and the work that reconnects in the spiral is just so artful. And I'm discerning about this. I've been to a number of Act of Hope workshops. I plan to organize one. And you guys rock at that. It is. <laughs> Take a bow. I particularly want to call out the visualization you did and seeing with new eyes, which I've not seen before, remembering a time when you made a difference through what you said and did, bring that feeling into your body, make a gesture, embody that. Fantastic way to tap into resourcefulness and much better than the more verbal process I've seen. And the one I'm going to add when I adopt it, and I will, is to say, and now let that feeling fill your body. And what does that open for you about how you can tap into your gratitude and your pain and make a difference in the world. 
what does that open for you now? And put people right into the energetic experience that launches them into going forth. So I'm so inspired by that. Thank you. Great. Sounds fantastic. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. Great. So I think this brings us to the end of our, um, our session together. Um, so, yeah, thank you everybody for participating. It's been really an honor and a pleasure to be with all of you. Um, so before I do like a sort of final blessing, I just want to check, is there, to Sylvia, is there anything else you want to say to be complete or can we close? Um, thank you, Margo. Yes, um, we can close now. And I want to say thank you to everybody who show up and stay until the end. I know that some people needed, needed to leave earlier. You all will uh, receive a follow-up email from the network uh, with the information about the program that Margo and Jacqueline are offering and all the, the different um, resources that have been shared. And you always can write back if you have questions. Another thing I noticed that many people have been uh, adding many resources to the chat. And mm -hmm. one way to save the chat so, so you, you know, don't have to hurry to copy and paste. Um, if you open the chat at the end, you will see close to file, there are three dots. And if you click on that, it says more and you can save the chat. If you're unable to do that, I can save the chat for you and I can send that with the email if you want. Okay, so uh, thank you very much. And you are really gifted, Margo and Jacqueline, as facilitators. I have been, I am also a facilitator and I have been providing technical support for many facilitators through the World of Reconnects Network. And every time I'm amazed of, you know, the different abilities and skills that facilitators have and the beautiful you know sharing of the spirals and thank you very much thank you sylvia for your thank hard you. work and all your support right. i just would like to complete with like a very close we call it a closing attunement a sort of one minute sort of moment to uh, to complete together and let's Feel our body, how we sit on our seat. Just noticing how we feel now at the end of this session. Let's remember the sharings, learnings, new insights and experiences. Let's imagine on in all the commitments. Let's imagine them as a blessing radiating out in our own lives, touching the hearts and minds of all those we meet, we interact with. Let's see it going out to others beyond our immediate circles. To all humans on this planet, all the non-humans, and to the earth itself, sending blessings in whatever shape or form is needed in each specific situation. As we send out blessings, let's see these blessings returning to us, touching our hearts. So we are part of this cycle. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. All the best on your next steps. Mm -hmm. Oh, I wonder, could we unmute everybody so everyone can say goodbye to everyone else all at the same time? So. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank you so much. Ciao, ciao. Bye. Bye. Be well and See safe. Other. See you. Thank you all with love. And you. Stay well, everybody. Yeah. Until next time. Thank you so much. Blessings. Oh. <laughs> How beautiful.
Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you all. Mm -hmm.